I need to replace the rear brake pads and rotors on my 2007 Chevy Trailblazer. Let me show you how to do that. So this really is no different than replacing the brake pads and rotors on any other disc brake pad vehicle. The process is pretty much the same, so I'm just going to go through the process really quick and show you how we get this done. Start out by removing two 14 millimeter bolts on the back of the brake caliper. Now you should be able to get the caliper out of there. Let's tuck that out of the way. Be careful of this line. You don't want to put any extra stress on that line. Now you can pop your old pads out of there. Oh yeah, those are toast. Look at that groove. There's two 18 millimeter bolts on the back side. So go ahead and break those loose. Once you get that last bolt out of there, this bracket will come right off. Now there's one last thing to deal with. You should be able to just pull this rotor off of there, but you can see these little clips on there. Those are a pain in the neck. You need to get rid of those. I usually just get in there and try to cut them off. A pair of side cutters or something comes right off. I don't like those things. I kind of get why they're on there, but really, Leave a comment down below what you do with those clips if you ever run across them. Do you put them back on? Do you replace them? Do you try to save them or do you just get rid of them like I do? Just let me know. Now, with any luck? Of course not. Fortunately, GM made these two holes on here that you can thread some bolts into to use as a jack. And jack those right out of there. This makes the uh, disassembly really simple. Even if it's rusted on there, you just thread those bolts in there and it presses that rotor right off. Look at that. Isn't that cool? Look at that rotor, that thing's trashed. Take your brand new rotor, slide it onto place. Now before you put it on there, make sure you take some brake parts cleaner and spray it off before you put it on there, right after you take it out of the packaging. They're usually packaged with some oily, greasy coating on there to keep it protected from corroding and uh, rusting while it's in the packaging. So make sure you spray that off of there first. Slip your new rotor on. Before you put that bracket back on, make sure these sliders slide free. Make sure there's nothing binding them up. They should slide freely with a little bit of spring tension on them. I like to take a wire brush, clean off these little tin clips here. Make sure there's no extra gunk or crud in there. It doesn't have to be spotless, but you want to make sure they're good and clean. Now let's go ahead and bolt that bracket back in place. Take your big 18 millimeter, tighten it down. Now you can go ahead and slip your new pads in place. Nothing fancy, they just slide into those metal clips. Now before you can go ahead and bolt the caliper back up, as you operate the brakes, this piston pushes out which pushes against your two brake pads. Over time as the pads wear, the piston comes out farther and farther and farther. And when you put new ones on, of course your new pads are much thicker than the old pads, so you need to push this piston back into the cylinder. So to do that, just take an old brake pad, stick it on there, take a C-clamp, and slowly, slowly, take your time, 
Put pressure on that cylinder, that piston, and it'll push back into there. You want to push it all the way back in. Once you have the piston all the way in, remove your C-clamp and the old pad. Slip it back in place. Reinstall your bolts. Tighten them down. And you're done. So go ahead and reassemble your wheel. Tighten all your lug nuts down. Before you drive off, make sure you pump the brakes a couple of times. That's going to get the fluid back into the lines, get the piston pushed back out where they're in contact with the new brake pads. Before you go whipping out onto the highway, do a couple of test stops. You know, maybe in your driveway or out in front of your house or something like that, just to make sure everything's working fine. I've never really had an issue where something's gone wrong, but I always try to test it out before I drive off. Well, I hope you found this a little bit helpful. Again, not really a difficult procedure, very similar to any other disc brake job. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up or two. Also, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. I really appreciate your support. Thanks a lot for watching. So while I was working on this brake job, my daughter was hanging out with me the whole time. Here's a couple of the things that were going on while I was working on the brakes. I forgot one thing. What Hold on. What did you forget? I gotcha. I <laughs> 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 Are you the cameraman now? Yeah. All right, so apparently I got a camera operator in here. That's cool. In this next clip, she brings me out a bigger ratchet, which is exactly what I needed. I didn't ask her to or anything. She just grabbed it out of my toolbox and brought it out. At one point during this process, I had smashed my finger a little bit and it was bleeding. It's what she says during this clip that cracks me up. She said, don't get bleedy with this, in case you can't understand it, so check it out. Daddy? What? Look it. You got a big one, that's what I should have used. But don't get bleedy, okay? What? Don't get bleedy with this one. Okay. <laughs> this one's really big. Okay, thank you. Ah, that's the wrench I should have been using. I need, I need to go get some other green soap because I'm dirty.